Hello, everybody. Hope everybody's having a good night tonight. Um, tonight's topic was because I've seen some people back in the community and be more active again, and I thought it was a good time to refresh a little bit of something that's seriously important but easily forgettable. Breaking down the large issues that you're dealing with into smaller ones, ones you can manage, and doing the ones you can manage and not worrying about the ones you can't. You know, we often get stuck in our own heads and worried about the things we can't control, so much so we don't pay attention to the little things we can do for ourselves. It could be as simple as just eating better meals, maybe, you know, getting a little exercise. And these things help you think clearer as well at the same time. Maybe taking a little time to yourself, maybe just as talking about a supervisor, um, going on vacation, maybe they needed that time to refresh. Hopefully they come back refreshed and in a good space and they didn't just ignore their problems and come back and, you know, have the same issues they're having before maybe with stress because sometimes you can let that still overwhelm you even on vacations <laughs> yeah the car see i've been dealing with things myself in the same way and focusing on the things i can work on and not worrying about the things i can't i know many of you deal with the same thing i know a, a few people have went on vacation recently because it's been summertime and you know that's always a good thing um but be sure that you take that time during your vacation to actually v take a vacation. If you're stuck in your head and thinking about work the whole time you're gone, you might not feel as refreshed as you should by the time you get back home. Sometimes you get back home and you, or go back to work and you're like, hey, I'm just as stressed as the day I left because you didn't really release any of that or deal with any of the things that were bothering you during that vacation. Hey, Chloe. Oh, it's Chris. Hey, Chris. Um, as you go through each day, try to break off at little bits that you can handle. It could be like in my case, when I can work, when I have the time to work on a car and it's not raining, I'm working on it. You know, I've been letting it go and it's been difficult. And I've been, it's almost been a meditation practice to try and let go of the days when it's raining and I can't do anything. Or if I'm waiting for a part, it's been stressful, but I've been doing a really good job of letting that go. And that's been a challenge for me as well. So don't think that anybody goes through life and doesn't have these challenges. Sometimes they get overwhelming and things just keep piling up over and over. It's like, think of it, like I said in the description, an avalanche. It just hits you all hard at once and maybe it might hit you for a long time and maybe it is in a second wave or third. But eventually that snow will stop falling or that the, the issues will stop coming down and you can Break away at them. Take it piece by piece. The easiest ones first, and eventually those bigger ones will either work themselves out or you'll figure out a way during the process. It's not an easy thing to do, but it's something that we easily forget about, especially if we're overwhelmed. Maybe take a little time to self-evaluate and see, is this something I can do something to help? Is there anything I can do? Is this something I and Just go through a checklist. If you think of things that you really have no control over, Put them aside on the keep them in your list but put them aside and say let's work on something i can work on today like i said it could be as simple as just if you're really in a bad spot it can be as simple as getting up in the morning you know how many people when they're depressed sleep until the afternoon especially if you're dealing with some kind of crisis and stuff out of work is a big one where a lot of times you get so stressed out that you don't get up in the morning well you're not going to find a job if you wait until five in the afternoon to look you know, if that's your issue, see, sometimes we're our own, we create our own issues by not focusing outwardly. And that's what I wanted to focus on tonight, because I know some people have been going through things. There are some things you can't control if you're dealing with loss of some sort. That's something that you, the best thing you can do is learn to reacclimate yourself with friends and family, to reattach get some of those feelings back because it's easy to pull back and pull away it's hard to actually reach out and actually start to feel again because that when you let that feeling in you're going to feel some of that sadness too because you're not shutting that part of you off but when you shut it off you're closing it off and letting it build like a bomb it's eventually going to come out you need to eventually let yourself open up again <laughs> kibasa we're having talks about food. That sounds good. Uh, large life change. Yeah. 
yeah, see, after a large life change, I found myself longing for social interactions. I've been going out on walks and to out to restaurants and spending time with family. Another thing with the world changing, out on walks and such used to be a real, could be a real social experience. Now you have to little go out of your way. Like I was saying in the last week's episode, you go out and you talk to people and be nice to them. Even though you keep your distance, like, you know, keep the social distancing thing so they feel comfortable. But, you know, if you see someone, you can tell that they're looking kind of down or have that blank look on their face to say, hey, how you doing? And often they will respond. It'll either shock them and I'll walk away, but they're still feeling it. Don't think they don't. They, they'll feel it. And then there's other times where they're like just they've been begging for this social interaction, just like you were saying, Nate, they want to feel that social interaction, but they haven't. So when someone breaks that like that glass all of a sudden it just falls out and they'll start talking you have conversations at random in a store or on the street you know that's what we need to get back to we want social interaction again because everything online is it's kind of almost a safety net but at the same time you don't get that a hundred percent of that feel you get some this type of interaction we get we are pretty much if you anyone wants to come in right now they can the link is in chat we can have a one-on-one -on -one conversation but a lot of times, you know, if you're watching pre-recorded videos or something or watching TV, you don't have that two-way interaction quite as quickly. And texting, you don't quite get that same feel through texting and messaging as you would face-to-face. -face. This is good. But if you can interact in person, it's even better. But at the same time, with, you know, today's world, a little bit of that, even if, no matter what your feelings on it, the comfort zone of having that space is definitely a big thing when you're out in public. It has become the norm. But you can still talk six feet away. It can still happen. You can still interact with people. You can still be polite. You can still be a kind person. It might take a little bit more effort, but it's worth it. Yeah, see, same with me. Uh, Vaping Jedi Josh. I was uh, quiet for a very long time. I had given up kind of on the world and stuff after losing my son, as well as when I was a counselor watching too many of my clients kind of use me just to get through a stepping stone to get to do a prescribed medication. So it was tough. It was hard. There were, the thing is, I didn't focus on the right thing. It's all about perspective. And I had the same problem. I didn't focus on the ones that did get better, the ones that needed it, and the ones that truly helped their lives. I didn't focus on that. I, it's so easy to focus on numbers. Don't get caught up in numbers. The numbers were more than not were going through me just for the medications, just for that stepping stone. And a lot of them were coming back like every six months to a year because they would you know, they would abuse those medications and then they get in trouble and then they'd have to start the program over again. Unfortunately, that is true, but you got to think there are others that do help. And for every one person you save or help, that's what truly matters in this world. It's not the people that are going to slip through the cracks. They're going to slip through anyway. That's just their cycle. That's on them. You're doing, you do the best you can to help others and hope that they do the right thing. And if they don't, don't let that bother you. Because it's not the ones you can't help. It's the ones you can. I know it's, it, it sounds, if you focus on numbers and percentages alone, it's different. But if there's one person here, because you were able to help them at any point in their life, and it can be as simple as you walking through a store and someone could be really, really depressed, ready to give up, and you just, hey, how you doing? And next thing you know, they're not feeling quite so depressed. How do you know that that wasn't the changing point that didn't save their life? In fact, there is a possibility you might find out later that that was actually the truth. You can't ever just think about the ones you, that you're not able to help. You have to think of the ones you can. And that's the way life is. You think about the things you can fix, the things you can work on, the things you can improve. Those are the focuses you need to focus on. You don't focus on the big picture and trying to fix it all at once. There's some things that just are up to chance and you don't have the control over changing. 
I didn't have control of the car breaking down. I did my best to make sure it didn't, but you know, sometimes things happen. Sorry about, sorry about that. That was a bike going by, but makes me a little jealous. I kind of wish I was out there, but <laughs> no, you can't focus on the things you can't do. Like I couldn't get the car fixed right away. I have to do it piece by piece while I get it, and I got to take my time so I do it right. And that's difficult because I'm so used to doing work where I have everything right in front of me, everything I need, and put it all together. Having to go through it and not wanting to go through and buy literally every single part or every tool, I'm going through the parts I know, and as I find them, I have to pause, wait until the next part comes in. It's kind of the way you ha I, this is one of the reasons why I brought this up this week. It's the way you have to look at life. You do what you can when you can. If you know you have to wait for something to fall into place, for something to help or something to work for you, focus on the parts you can do. Pause on it, put that aside, but don't forget about it until you can get back to it and actually be ready to do it. It might just be your mental state's not ready to take on that responsibility or that issue at the time. Do what you can when you can. And for that matter, help when you can, when whenever you can. Because that could be that person needs that little bit of help to hold them over in between or to get them through that next step. It can be as simple as a few kind words. Listening to them. Or just randomly having a music night or something, you know, in Zoom. That can happen. That can change an entire life in a way it's going. Spending a little bit of time reaching out. Be more like Addy. I'm sorry, but I'm going to use you again, Addy, because it's true. Being a positive person in this community, being in chat, if you see someone struggling in chat, reaching out to them, seeing how they're doing. Hey, Lando. These are important things that we really need to do on a daily basis that can help each other. We think that the world is hard. It is. But is it impossible as a single single entity, one person? It's difficult, especially if things just happen to keep piling on you. But as a group, as a community, as a family, we can come through this. We can pull through this, and we can actually make the world a better place. Maybe not the entire world, but it'll grow. It'll keep getting better. At least we'll have a segment of the world that we know is better because of us. And all of you in chat are a part of that world. You have been a part of that world. I have seen every single one of you be positive at one point or another and helpful to another person. Everybody that I can, everybody I know is in chat. Now, the others that are might be ghosting, that's fine. Maybe you haven't stepped up yet. That's okay. Maybe you haven't accepted help yet. That's okay. It's the other thing. Let things go. Don't focus on what you could have done, should have done. Worry about what you can do or what you will do. And do what you can to make a mark on this world in a positive way for yourself and others. That's the way I look at life, and I hope that many others look at life the same way. So I'm not <laughs> really not trying to preach here. This is more of a like self-help thing. Do what you can do. Not what anybody tells you you can do. Because I know it's really easy to give advice on what you think someone can do. And they, in your head, do you think they can do it? But there might be something, even a mental block or something, that's causing them to hold back. So it's up to them to work on that and figure out their way around it. Maybe that's not what they're going to be able to do right now. Maybe they need to focus on something else first. Going for a walk, like that's, that's a great thing to start doing. You know, walk itself is just a mind clearing experience. It gives you the exercise. It gives you that almost, it's a type of meditation almost. When you're going for that walk, if you really focus on the walk, maybe focus on nature, a little bit of distraction, it lets you open up your mind to new thoughts and fresh ideas and maybe things that you had in your head that you just didn't realize were there because you were so overwhelmed by something else. And this is why life gets better. Something that I, I find it hard to believe, if you really think about it, with the way that we've become more technologically almost impaired. We're not impaired on having it. We're impaired because of it. Because we focus so much on allowing our technology to take care of things for us. 
we don't think about how to do things for ourselves. We're used to instant answers. Look it up on Google it, you know, Google it or Hey Siri. And instantly you have your answer. Well, some life isn't quite as simple as that in most cases. You have to actually find your own way and there's no real answer except for in your own head. When you're dealing with grief and loss, there are suggestions people can give you, but you really have to find your own path to getting as whole as you can again. And that doesn't mean whole. You might have to accept the fact that there's always going to be a part of you that isn't the same as it was before. There's always going to be a part of that pain. I apologize that that ring went through. I hope it didn't. Windows security update. I haven't updated it apparently. So you try to work through that pain is your way. And when you're ready, try to reach out when you can because that will heal you more than you think. It feels like being alone is a good thing, and sometimes it is. But there's also that point that you feel too comfortable with it, and then you don't reach out, and you start to get into that dark place, that place where there is no coming back from. It's only going to get deeper unless you have outside connection. That's where we come into play. That's where the Discord, Break the Stigma of Unity, Nightbot should have dropped the link. Hopefully it did. If not, let me know and I will drop it at the end of the, link, end of the um, show or Addy can because I know Addy always does. He's just, like I said, be more like Addy. But it's a place to go if you need to reach out. Even if you just want to sit there and ghost in there, sometimes that can help. I've had people in there, they've been in there like close to six months before they actually spoke and said they'd been watching and just seeing others help each other was actually helping them feel better because it gave them hope for the world. It's strange how that happens, but it's true. You see others doing this. You see, you might, you'd be surprised that having that conversation, say in a store or on the street or while you're walking with somebody, it might not just help the person you're talking to. You might see someone else. Someone else might be nearby close enough to hear or see the conversation happen and realize there's good in this world more than I thought, and it can help them. It's a chain reaction that can make the world bigger and better for all of us. So, and tonight, right after this stream, I'm going to shut down this stream. I'm going to open up a new stream, and we're going to have a game night on a Thursday night, since there's no vlog tonight. There's no vlog, right? Double check and make sure. I don't believe there's supposed to be one till next week. Um, if there is, then we won't be. But if there isn't, we'll have a game after this stream, so that, you know, some of the people that can't make Saturday night streams and have a little bit of adult, excuse me, adult gaming, can. And it will be adult, so if anybody doesn't like, I will say, if it, oh, I can't say for sure. It's a Thursday stream. It might not be as adult, but as I say, the Saturday stream gets a little adult, a little risque. So just a fair warning to those that do join tonight. We have been um, helping out this last past week on two shows I have been on this week, and I think they are both great and helpful streams for people. And welcome, Lando. Great and helpful streams to people, and they are um, Mixers Helping Mixers on Sunday nights. Uh, Zippy has been running it for, uh, that's Mike's, it's on Mike's old channel. And that is to continue Mike's legacy of helping people to get into the mixing and just generally being a positive force in the community. And then there's Tuesday nights, uh, we have uh, Mixing It Up, and then after Mixing It Up, we have... Um, holding down the kitchen on meters channel and that is to continue while fresh is dealing with his issues his health issues while he's dealing with them and getting better we're gonna they're holding down the kitchen and i've been on there last few weeks and i plan to as long as i can to continue to help people for the same thing of helping with mixing questions mixing answers we have people like addy that constantly show up that get kind of the real pros <laughs> but you know, we want to continue to move forward and help people. And that's all we can do in this world. And yes, hashtag real men cry, Nate. That is so true. Because, Lando, how was your week? I know I know you got something this week that was kind of positive. I saw that. So. Yeah, I actually went shopping today, too. 
I went shopping yesterday because we went to a Walmart that's pretty close to here. It's like a 20, 25 minute drive from here. It's actually the same town I was born in. But uh, yeah, we went there. I got a video game for my Nintendo Switch, an actual physical one. So surprised how tiny of those damn <laughs> Nintendo <laughs> Switch cartridges are. They're tiny. I have nipples bigger than those things. Anyways, but uh, yeah, today we went shopping and I bought a couple more things. I bought a cheap alternative to you went uh, silent. I got that. What? You went silent for a minute. Nobody could hear you. At least I couldn't. Maybe you're going deaf at your old age. <laughs> and uh, as you can probably see behind me, I bought something to cover my window for days when I don't need my fan. Like today, I didn't need my window fan on. I have both of my other fans. You can see one right there. have that on, plus the one on the other side of my bed. I have those turned on because I was laying in bed and totally forgot you had a show tonight. <laughs> so, yeah, this thing just covers my window. It's one of those that's supposed to trap light, light and, and light stuff. blocker a blackout mm -hmm. curtain yep yep except because normally like during winter around here and stuff i'll use a really thick blanket so now i don't have to i just have this thing now you're not the only one that got a uh, nintendo product this week that was enjoying it uh, adam uh, wound up getting his uh, his Wii U and his Zelda game. It's a few years old, but he's wanted, wanted to play that forever and just finally broke down and got it, even though it is a little older. It doesn't really matter. It's just still, you know, it's a good way to have a little bit of relaxation, maybe have a little sort of zen time, you know, escape reality a little bit. Same with a good book. If you like to read, that's also an, always a good option. Yeah, I wouldn't suggest getting any, like, Definitely don't get the game that I got because every time you die, you want to throw the controller at the TV. <laughs> it's that like was Call me of... yesterday and today. It's like Call of Duty and any of the Call of Duty type games. They they are great, but they bring out Tourette's and they bring out some of the most angry part of your body. It can go both ways. It's like, hey, this feels good if you're having a good night. But there's those nights when you just, nothing seems to go right. Everything seems yeah. to glitch. I swear everybody is cheating. <laughs> It just doesn't make sense otherwise. It's like, how can you be that good? You got aimbot. You know, that always happens. And I've been the person being accused of aimbot before, so I know that's not, quite often it's not the case. It's just the fact that you're having a rough night or you're having an internet connection issue. Mm -hmm. Yeah, especially when when I used to have Call of Duty on my computer, but I can't read it because I don't have the room for it. And when I was playing, I would always play single person. Because nobody ever wanted to play with me. Aww. But uh, but no, I uh, I would die all the time, and every time I was swearing, I sounded more and more like my father every fucking time I played that game. Every version of the f bomb came out of my mouth. I was swearing, to God, and everything. It, it, remi it reminds me of like grandma playing Monopoly. You'd hear words come out of grandma's mouth sometimes that you never expected to come out of that wholesome woman. <laughs> it's just, and I think Call of Duty is the new version of Monopoly when it comes to that. You hear words come out of people's mouths you never expect. True, but it also matters on your grandma too. <laughs> like my grandma on my dad's side, she had no filter. That's pretty much either. where I get my it dad, from. <laughs> My but my other grandmother, who passed away a few years ago, she was more tame, definitely. I never heard her swear a day my whole life. And But my other grandma, oh yeah, she had a dirty mouth. Yeah, and I'd agree with uh, Lady Liberty. Our, one of my favorite parts this week was we had Subway with my uh, kid, and we played cards after. 
watched a little bit of TV. And that was actually my favorite part of the week, too. It's been a while since I've seen her. She's been busy working, getting ready for college this fall, paying her own tuition costs. Cheers to my kid paying her own tuition costs this year. Yay. <laughs> Less money getting out of your pocket. <laughs> less less crippling debt. Yeah, a little less crippling debt for me. So that's actually good. It's already enough crippling debt. It's way too high. But, you know, that's, a, that's always a positive. Eventually, she'll be done with school and uh, she'll be making money. And then she can pay off some of that crippling debt. Hey, that'll <laughs> yeah. be nice. That day will be nice. So. But, no, it's life is tough. I mean, you, you went through it. You know, sometimes it gets very overwhelming and you can't think of what you can do to help it. And there are usually things you can do, but it's real easy to lose them when you're thinking about the big ones you can't change. It's like that, that, that rock and boulders hold me. Oh, wait a minute. That's right. I can, if I move this one, I can move out of the way a little, you know, <laughs> kind of. Yeah. It's just you don't see it. You don't see the things you can because you get so overwhelmed by the things you can't change or fix yourself. Yeah, like how I've changed how we're doing the podcast now before we didn't care about what kind of movie that we are going to be talking about now we're doing different ones that belong together like us reviewing two Wes Craven films before that we did movies on actual serial killers you know stuff like that we're starting to do with the podcast yeah it's co- it's it's all new, always an evolving process life is that way too yep and it can get frustrating because there was plenty of times where i couldn't pick a movie and finally i decided you know what let's have like a theme to each episode now Trying to make your age quit a hundred people catering. Well, you actually catered was at a wedding or something for a hundred people in a family. That would be tough. I couldn't imagine doing that for family. It's one thing when you're getting paid as a restaurant, but if you're actually work, if I'm reading that right and it was catering for a hundred people in the family, that would be. That's a lot. That is a lot to take on. <laughs> My hats off to anyone who is even willing to try that. That sounds like a lot of work. And, you know, family is the worst critic. It really is. Because, you know, you'll have a lot of family that'll, a lot of family and friends will be like, go to, say it is catered by a restaurant, to be like, oh, I don't want to say nothing. I don't know that person. But when it's like your Uncle Bob, it's like, hey, Uncle Bob, you you overcooked this steak. Or, you know, it's, yeah. Yeah, they, if that yeah. happened in my dad's side of the family, somebody would probably get punched, shot, who you knows. <laughs> My dad's family is nuts. Vow renewal solo. Oh, wow. Yeah. No. No. I, I give you a lot of credit for even attempting that. Uh, so it's this weekend. Well, Matthew. <laughs> if, was it, is, is it before Saturday's show? Because um, maybe you'll need Saturday night's gaming night to kind of relax and chill. That sounds like a rough day. It really, truly does. Yeah. Um, I would not I would not volunteer for that unless I probably would. Yeah. I'd make the mistake of volunteering first and then I'd be like he, him. It's like, oh my yeah, god, what I did I what did I say I would do? Yeah. I'd be the smart one and be like, hey, hell no. Oh boy. Yeah, I heard that story. <laughs> you can read it if you want, Lando. Oh God. Nothing as traumatizing as. <laughs> yeah, that I I heard that story before. Yep. Her grandmother actually said that. Hmm. I don't know. Having mine strip on the bar. I have so many fucking comments to say that, but I'm going to behave myself. I, I, I worked at a restaurant in the back bar in the front <coughs> place when I was growing up as a teenager and I lived with my grandmother and she was my ride home. And I came out one day from work after work in the back and the bar was still open, came out to her stripping on the bar. My grandmother's stripping on the bar, walked right back into the kitchen and she goes, what's going on? I explained to my boss what was going on. She gave me some free chicken wings and some free fries and said, you just sit back here and I'll let you know when the coast is clear. 
<laughs> yeah. At least you got fed. <laughs> it was a traumatizing experience. Not something I ever want to walk out to again or, or ever did in my life. That was not, not cool. But that's how free-spirited my grandmother was. <clears throat> I guess she only got down to her underwear, but that's still more than I ever want to see. So I'm good. Yep. Yeah. yeah. She was having a good time. That's all I can say about it. But yeah, that's my father's side grandmother. Like I said, yeah, I understand yeah, that no filter. the dad side. That, that no filter <laughs> side. Now my mother's side, yep. she was, they had their quiet moments where they could be a little bit, you know, out there, but on the surface, they were very reserved and kind of quiet. You know, my grandmother on that side was. Although she would come out with one-liners once in a while, but they were never nearly as vulgar as on my father's side of the family. So, yeah, I guess I don't know how that worked out. But yeah. <laughs> yep, it's always the dad side of the family. Yep. But, yeah. Yeah, she. That's true. She is a prude and talks about that. She was kind of a prude, and it, to hear her talk like that was kind of like what? Because she actually reverbed that one time when we were sitting at the uh, at the kitchen table all talking, hanging out, and she mentioned, "Yeah, I, I'd much rather you know." Oh no, 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 just no. <laughs> and talking like a ninety-year-old woman. No. <laughs> Yeah, not cool. So, Lando, you wanted me to ship my mother to you? Is that what you said? Okay, I'll look at it for shipping costs. No. <laughs> no, I'm good. No, I hope everybody is having a good week. Let's keep the positivity rolling in your own lives, not just here during the stream. Just try to focus on the positive as much as you can. Look forward to the things that you really enjoy. It's a little difficult. There's a couple shows that we normally enjoy that haven't been on, which I'll be honest, I'm feeling it a little bit. I can't wait until they come back. Uh, Fresh, for one of them, I can't wait until Fresh comes back because I, I miss hearing his uh, expertise. He's actually it's kind of a guru when it comes to mixing, and it's kind of really sad that he hasn't been around. Understandable, and I don't want to force him to hurry up either because you know you need that time to heal and feel better, especially when it's a physical illness. And we just keep moving forward. Excuse me. This is making me burp. It's just water. <laughs> Weird. Oh, see? She cares about you, Lando. She wouldn't even send my mom to you. <laughs> uh, maybe for Valentine's Day. <laughs> yeah. No. I, I don't want to be your new daddy. <laughs> Yeah. Ma so Matthew, uh, if you need to talk this weekend or something afterwards, let me know. Um, it sounds like that's going to be a you're you're fighting off a big challenge. However, you're doing it because you care, and that actually shows a little character right there, a lot of character. In fact, more than I can say. Lando, for sure, he already expressed he wouldn't have done it, and I'm thinking to myself, I would have done my best not to not to agree to it. No, <laughs> but you know, if everything does work out, that'll actually nobody else will forget either. Though you'll have a lot of family members that will remember what you did. You might not always say it, but when it comes down to it, I guarantee this is one of those things where you get the rumor mill in the background. It's a good rumor mill. They're like. Can you believe he did that? You know, like I could see me doing it if I had a family member that catered to something like that and did it all for did the, all the catering. I'd remember that. I'm sure it'd be brought up again whenever catering came up. Yeah, you worried about catering a party of 25, 30 people? This guy did a hundred. He's a family member. You know? Yeah, it's surprising what you can be remembered for. And the more things you do positive, the more things you positive you're remembered for. And the more often your name comes up in good company rather than, uh, hey, you know, still counting by Volbeat type song. <laughs> well, anybody who knows that song understands its meaning. <laughs> Lando's like, I know that song. <laughs> no? 
Not a clue? Ah. Yeah, we got a lot of good people in the community, though. Got a shout out to Meter. Uh, oh, Meter does many things. Uh, shout out to Addy, to DeMillan, to Wendy, to Mandalorian. You know, I got to shout these people out that have been helping out the community. To Grim Green, who's taking a little time off of YouTube, but that's actually deservingly so after 12 years of non-stop putting out content repeatedly and he's not giving up the community he still can still has his after vlog uh hangouts he'll have one tonight he's still doing his twitter and his other social medias he's not disappeared he didn't take a true vacation he just took a little vacation off youtube and with the way youtube has been these past couple years i don't blame him a bit Yeah. Yeah, and I get that, Matthew, and that's the reason I expected that you did that. But, you know, the fact that you did, regardless of the reasons why, shows that you have a kind enough heart to try and pull this off. That is not something light to take. And being the that you volunteered makes it even more special. I mean, you're lucky that you we don't know where the venue is and it's not close enough to us. So we'd have 102 at least going, right, Lando? You'd be signed up, right? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> just to go hang out with Matthew. There we go. Yeah, as we go through each day, you can always, almost daily, reach out to somebody. I actually reached out to a couple people I hadn't heard from in a while this past week on social media that I hadn't heard from in a quite a while and not all two or three of them. Hey, two or three ain't bad, right? Uh, two out of three of them got back to me and unfortunately both kind of struggling, but I'm glad I reached out because they did respond and responding means that they still need that connection even more. So, um, the third person hasn't responded yet, but I expect they probably will in the next couple of days. And last I knew, they weren't going through a great situation. They were going through a divorce and such. So let's hope that uh, things are going better on that end. But just, and these are people I haven't reached out to in, well, one of them about a year and the other one's a few months. Getting a new phone helped. It actually reminded me I hadn't talked to them in a year. So it's like, yes, okay, I got to do this. So remind, when my, reminders come up from like a year ago, like say Facebook reminders of a year ago, and you see if someone's comment on that post, Remember, if you haven't heard from them and you know that they might have been struggling or maybe just because you haven't heard from them, say hi. Ask them how things are going. It might make a difference in their life because they you never really know. It's surprising where you get the motivation to reach out from. How long does it take to say that? A few seconds? Could change a life. Could mean an extra decade or two of their life. You never know. There it is. Nightbot actually put the Discord into the... Thank you, Nightbot. Good job, bro. <laughs> There's where you join up. And if the link ever stops working, if you're watching this on replay, just reach out to me or uh, Lady Liberty and we will get you the newest link because it's supposed to be... a uh, Link is supposed to be permanent, but it doesn't <coughs> always work. Bless you. It doesn't always work permanently. We have found out, thanks to Addy, figuring it out that the link does need to be updated. Actually, it's John. I think John figured that out, that the update, the link only lasts so long, and then it, when they do their updates, it no longer functions. Yeah, I think the link to my Discord is like an infinite link or whatever. Oh, you know, they're supposed to be infinite, but sometimes they, I would check on it and make sure it still works every now and then because they do reset, even though it's supposed to be infinite. That's what John figured out for me a while back. It was he, he was putting out the same link and someone said they couldn't use it and he tried it and it didn't work either. And he made another one and then tried it again in a few weeks, same thing, in a few weeks it wouldn't work either. So I tried to update mine. I updated it on Saturday, so if this link doesn't work, it's been updated since Saturday. Saturday was the last time I updated my bot. So, with this. Yeah, I just checked. Yeah. So, it still works. Okay. Good. That's good to know. Thank you. Yep. That's okay, Matthew. You have a good weekend. Like I said, we'll be here. So, you go have a good weekend and try to relax. 
Now enjoy all those compliments because I'm sure there will be some compliments and thank yous. That's the most rewarding part about helping out someone. Okay, that's fine, Nate. So, Lando, other than getting your gaming system, did you enjoy going shopping this week? Uh, yeah. I mean, I finally got something to cover this that isn't a thick-ass blanket. My mom, she bought me a three-pack of white T-shirts. That's why I'm finally wearing a shirt that doesn't have sweat stains around here or holes everywhere. Yeah, you did talk about that curtain, wanting one of those curtains a while back rather than the stupid blanket is your exact words. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. So that's uh, good. Yeah, she got me this because my birthday's in like, uh, let's see, today's, yeah, today's Thursday, so 26 days from now. How many hours? How many minutes? (laughs) He'll get there. Don't worry. Last few days, he'll know this answer. So, because you'll be 21 again. Congratulations! Your 21st birthday is coming up again. So. Yeah, I look like I'm 21, but I'm not. I'm far from it. My 20s are long gone. My 40s are creeping up on me. That's all right. You'll just be a 40 year old you. Or a 21-year-old you that's a little seasoned. That's better. Yeah. Now, we got some great people. Um, I love you guys in chat. Thank you, Nate, Matt, Addy. Who else did we see in here at the beginning? There was more in here at the beginning. A couple people. uh, uh, Jedi was in here for a little bit. Um... It wasn't in chat. I didn't see him in chat, but I know Lethal was talking earlier to me. And yeah, it's it's this community makes a difference just being around it. I spent some time in uh, Zoom with a few people the other night. It's just it's always here, and you don't always have to catch this live. You don't have to watch the shows regularly. If you have the time, tune in when you can. I'm not one of those shows that's going to beg you to come every time if you don't have the time and you need something else and more important to deal with deal with it this is just here for when you need it and that's the purpose of this show you know if you need have a thursday or a saturday you need a little bit of you know some friendship some kind words some hanging out maybe if it's a game night get a little gaming a little adult humor sometimes people ghost in chat i i don't do it often but i do understand the ghosting thing especially if you have a name that anybody recognizes because if you're on a phone and you need to respond to all the people, sometimes that gets a little bit overwhelming. So for those of you that do show up and haven't said something in chat, I thank you. And I hope you're having a good day as well. And again, you can still reach out privately if you want to, if you don't want to like do it publicly. Because that's what the community is all about. I do my best to have time. I don't have a ton of time with everything else going on in my life. But I, if you're really going through something, you will definitely get a response. At least I might not have a lot of time to hang out, but we'll figure something out as best we can. Or maybe there might be somebody or some organization or some connection that can be made that can help you even more than I can. Because we don't all have all the answers. Nobody has all the answers. Everybody has a little piece of this, a little piece of that. Like, if you have a horror movie question, there's a good chance Lando might be able to help you. So Yeah, there's like a 95% chance, yeah. And and here's the thing. You never know. Someone might actually have a horror movie question. It's very possible. And that might be something that's bugging them, or maybe they're just trying to distract themselves, but they can't quite figure out, what's the name of that movie? I want to watch it again, but I can't remember. You know, it's possible. Or what? Do you remember the line? Or do you remember the line from? I remember this line from a movie, but I can't remember which one it is, and it's bugging me. And even Google doesn't always do it that right. I have tried. There have been times there are Google and Siri. Oh, Siri is just Siri's not not as bright as Google. Google's a little more smart. I'm sorry, but it's true. Like, hey, I'm not gonna say it because it'll actually respond. I forgot I have it now. 
But if you say it and you ask the question, a lot of times I can't find that. Or here's what I found on the web and you look and it's like, that's not the right question. <laughs> yeah. I find it, we found that Google's a little better, especially with maps. Google's just a little bit better. Missing my Google. <laughs> you can always download the Google app. There you go. Have you seen session nine? It's a suspense horror, not gore. Sounds familiar, but I don't think so. Let's see, suspense su suspense ones are not up his alley as much, but we have had a couple of them that weren't bad. Yeah. Even you admitted weren't bad that we've had uh, we've reviewed already. Now that's something we might think about for a future. That's kind of almost a suggestion. A suspense horror. We haven't done a specific suspense horror theme yet. Yeah. Not going to be up your alley, but we could probably find something good. Hmm. Well, a lot of movies aren't up my alley, especially ones that you've picked. Oh, come on. You love that one with the clown. I knew you were going to fucking mention that again. What was his name again? Killjoy. Killjoy. That's it. Yep, yeah. That's the and the, and they made like nine and they made like nine of them. The first one was terrible. Why would you repeat that? <laughs> just just saying. All right. Cult classic, fine. But there's a reason it's a cult classic and not a typical like run of the mill classic. It's one of those yeah. ones where you have to have a very special mind and like things being a little off in order to like cuz it just okay. Yeah, you'd probably need a whole lot of shed time to enjoy Killjoy. So we should watch and 2 I and mean 3. A lot of it. So we should watch 2 and 3 next. Got it. No. <laughs> no. I don't have enough shed time for me to enjoy any more of those. Nope. It's about a crew going to a closed asylum to clean the asbestos out so they can repurpose it for government offices. That sounds familiar. I'm not, I may have seen that. I've either seen it or the previews, but I may have seen it. That's actually kind of a cool idea. You're looking it up, aren't you? Yeah, now I am. <laughs> there you go, Nate. Thank you, Nate. Because that actually, you got Lando's mind thinking, which is another positive for his week, because now he's thinking more in terms of some of his favorite stuff. Sure. It's things like this, distractions. They can be a, it, it's something you don't think of as being a step to help yourself think clearer. But it really helps because if you distract yourself long enough, you can see things from an outside perspective and almost an open picture rather than seeing it directly up close when it's stuck right in your head. That movie was ter ter horrible. It really was. So we should definitely watch the second and third and fourth and fifth and sixth and seventh and eighth and ninth one. No, 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 fuck no. Let's marathon that. Yeah. That's a good step to getting into that dark place, I'm pretty sure. Then they'll have a twitch by the time we get to episode five. My fucking eye that already twitches sometimes, especially after I take off my glasses that I never wear. My eye would start twitching even more if I had to watch any more of those damn movies. All right, so you got me curious too. I'm gonna we're gonna have to look this uh, look at this one. Yeah, I'm uh, looking up. The only actor that looks familiar to me is Dave Caruso. Oh, he okay. was in uh, CSI Miami. Yep, but he said uh, Nate is saying it's set in Danvers State Mental Hospital, local to him. So that's actually, yeah. that's kind of cool when it's, they, you know, it's kind of weird because it's like Lake Placid was right next to where my grandmother's camp was in New York every every year. Even though the Lake Placid movie and about the crocodile is not even based on the same lake. It's based on a secluded lake, whereas Lake Placid's kind of almost like a resort place. Yeah. 
more than a secluded lake now. But it's funny that they did that, and it actually is a real place, but yet they didn't use the real place. So I always found that weird. When you're going to use a place that's real, then there's lethal. I spoke of you earlier, so apparently you heard me. The yo, yo, yo must be the same as me saying lethal, lethal, lethal. I brought him out. Uh, it's good to see you, bro. There's someone else is going on vacation from what I'm reading. What I read earlier. That sounds like a good fun time. Oh, vacations yeah, are needed. Yeah, there's a couple other actors and actresses that I've seen like Lake yeah, Placid Michael is beautiful. Kane on here. Is in that movie? Yep. Nice. He's in that movie. Peter Mullen is in this movie. Kate Beckinsale. Arr. She's in there. <laughs> uh, yeah, Lethal. Ben Kingsley. I think that's about the only actors I know. I think this one guy looks familiar. David something. I can't pronounce his last name, but he looks not, familiar. Not David Arquette, is it? No. <laughs> I can fucking pronounce that one easily. Yeah, Lake Placid is beautiful. Upstate New York is beautiful. True upstate New York is. The downside to it is it's literally in the middle of nowhere. But, yeah. And like I said, Lake Placid, actually, it, once the Olympics were there, it actually became more of a resort after that. It, it really exploded. I remember watching from my grandmother's, my great-grandmother's nursing home room, uh, we used to go out and take, uh, used to take one of the guys for walks on the, out there while I was there because I don't know, people gravitate toward me. So I used to take him for walks cause he never had any family to come take him outside. And we'd go out there and sometimes sit in one of the benches out in front of the place and watch the, uh, practice ski jumps in the summertime where they come down the practice ski jumps and they land in those big pile of like, I don't know, styrofoam looking things, whatever it is. Cause when they landed, just poofed. It was just, you just see him go out of sight and then just this poof of white fly up in the air. And we, that was the fun part. The old guy used to laugh at it every time they landed because he'd see that poof. And then, yeah, we, we kept joking about how hard it would be had to climb out of that because you figure if it is like a ball pit, imagine like this huge ball pit and you're going to have to climb out of this thing because it's got to be able to catch you in a wide angle. It would probably take a few minutes just to get someone out of there. I don't know. Just one of those things where, you know, thought processes break it down. And remember that, too. If you ever do live near a place like that, either a dog kennel or, you know, a humane society, or if you live near a nursing home, and you feel like doing a good deed, you know, have a little bit of spare time, head over there and see if they could use some help. You know, befriending some of these people that are in these nursing homes that maybe don't have family to come by and visit. Take them yeah. out for a walk and make a huge difference in their lives because otherwise they just sit there and basically rot away. And that's a real sad way to end your life. Yeah, I know uh, back when I was in high school, I was in uh, I was in special ed because of my learning disability. And uh, my special ed teacher, she had us during like certain days of the week, I think it was like Wednesdays or something, we'd actually go to the same nursing home here in town and we would play games with the elderly for about an hour I think we were there so basically a whole class period and yeah we would sometimes play bowling right there where they ate and everything yeah that's it was a that's pretty awesome. big room I mean it was yeah, it's about two, maybe three times bigger than my bedroom. And my bedroom isn't that big. So, uh, yeah, every week or so, we would go down there and play games with them and talk to them. And I remember we even did a little play during, like, Christmas one year, too. I think it was... Maybe my junior year in high school that we did that. It sounds that like he had a pretty, pretty awesome teacher. Eh. 
had a big heart. A bitch. But, uh, yeah. Just because she turned you down. No. (laughs) Dude, no. There was. No. She's. No. (laughs) Just no. Okay, got it. (laughs) That and she had the same last name as me. So, no. So, so, so that's why, because she was related to you and you didn't even know it. Okay, got it. I hope not. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, we would do things like that here and there. And I know, uh, one time I did this kind of like a job program during a few hours in high school too, where I uh, I was pretty much a janitor at the local jail here, and I would pretty much clean up people's offices when they're not there and stuff like that. Like clear your own record. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was only one time. Anyways, when uh, I was there, my uncle who used to work there as the private investigator at the time. I even got to clean his office once or twice. So I got to see my uncle sometimes when I was there. That's awesome. Kind of cool. Yeah. He ended up being the county sheriff a few, for a few terms shortly after high school and then now he's retired and so you have semi-famous people in your family here huh i wouldn't say famous (laughs) definitely gave my friends a reason to mess with me sure because they would always say that i was working for my uncle when he was the sheriff yeah, I'm glad that uh, Lethal, is, Lethal, you needed a vacation. You've needed a break. You've been getting stressed out from now and then. You know, It's time for you to have a little time away. I'm glad you're having a good time. I hope you enjoy your vacation. I hope it's, it's good weather for the whole vacation. hope you get a little fishing in, too. I mean, if you're going on vacation, I feel like Lethal has to be fishing some. If he's not fishing, it doesn't sound like the right vacation for him. That's just my thoughts. I think he enjoys some fishing. Hopefully they bite too, because the water's high. So, my mother, by the way, if anyone is a fisherman, my mother's saying that the brown trout are biting really well in upstate New York, even though the water's really high. So uh, maybe I I haven't been fishing because I thought the water was too high, but according to her, they were biting really good. So maybe I'll have to do that sometime in the next few days. I mean, it's a something i hadn't thought of because i've been putting it on my mind on purpose it's one of those things like i don't want to think about fishing because if i think about that i think about the rain no no and if i go out there and i get frustrated because they're not biting i'll be <laughs> yeah so yeah, yeah. Gone fishing in years i think the last time i went legit fishing was with my oldest half brother and my nephew when he was still a kid i think he was like maybe 12 13 years old at the time and he's only like six years younger than me yeah and if you if you're not a fisherman and you like fish you know you're anywhere near an aquarium go check that out check out any of these uh wildlife places or aquariums you get in touch with nature if you're from a place that isn't really in the nature you know sometimes it's nice to get away even if you are like someone who lives like rural areas like i do it's still nice sometimes to go out there and see some of these species you don't see either aren't local or maybe they are but you never see them because they're rare it's it can be a lot of fun we even went to this little rinky dink thing they got down the street here every year they can't cancel it last year because of everything going on but it's just this wildlife festival thing it's really set up for like preteens and teens but we went in there not knowing that and my daughter was already like 17 at the time so we went in there thinking this is for like at all ages it really wasn't but we went in there and we still got to see like uh they had some animals like hawks and um owls that were like 
had been maimed in some way and they couldn't be released. So that was kind of cool being able to get up close. I mean, you think a hawk, like a chicken hawk, is not that big. Oh, no, they're, they're, they're actually quite large. That one had like a missing talon, part of its talon missing. So they, it had to be kept because it was wounded. But it's, you get up and close to these animals and sometimes you see things and learn things you didn't know. Watching the owl turn his head completely around. You know, if you've lived in, like I've seen it a few times out in nature, but I've never seen it up close that close turning around like that except for this past year or uh, two years where I saw the one right outside my door that looked at me like I was lunch. It's like, I didn't like that one, but by the yeah, way, owls can get I... large. <laughs> yeah. Back when I lived in Minnesota, uh, we went to, I think it was the first year of me living there. Yeah. I was back in first grade. And, uh, I had a, project to do and my subject was some type of horse. I had to make a little poster type thing and and we end up going to a pretty much a zoo almost and I got to see this kind of horse that I read a, a report on and everybody else got to see their animals and it was pretty cool. I mean when I saw the horses, we were in one of those things that raised way up in the air, and you, you're pretty much hovering in the air, I guess. Not really hovering, but but we looked down and we got to see the horses like miles away from us, but we still got to see them right below us. And that was cool, even though I'm um, Catch a Friday bites even back then, and I remember seeing. I uh, uh, can't remember the name of the bird, but that type of bird that is from Fruit Loops. The toucan. Yeah, I even got to see those kind of birds too. I know. I think a girl had. Look, it's Vacation Boy. What's up? It's Vacation Boy. Yeah, I'm just settling into the new place for the next week and a half. Also, it's a long vacation. Yeah, yeah, it is a long vacation, but one much needed. Uh, work's been stressful, so it's time for a break. It wouldn't but be called work if it's something. fun. I have to say something. I do have something I wanted to say in, in regards to something that you had brought up earlier. Mm -hmm. And... Um, you had mentioned something about if you live within the area of like a nursing home or in you know an aspca um, aspca most specifically for myself personally um one of the my favorite things to do is to actually share my time and donate my time to an mspca facility where i will go and i will spend time with the animals there they need as much love as other humans do and they need to remain socialized in order to be good pets for other owners um and they just they need that love and that care just just like the elderly at the um you know nursing homes they they need that and donating your time to a, a place like that is always more than welcomed um they're more than happy to have people i mean now with covid and everything i don't know how that works but i know that in a normal situation they're more than happy to have you come in spend some time with the elderly and let them know that somebody's thinking of them. Yep. And they, they might have you do some testing. Uh, it's possible. You might have to have a test, but yep. I mean, if you have been tested anyway or need to be tested occasionally for something anyway, it might still be right up your alley because I know like my daughter had to be tested for school anyway. So right. it makes sense. Pay no mind to me. I'm on vacation. Yep. That's the right type of vacation drink. I had those last week. So <laughs> oh, the down home punch. I haven't had down home punch in absolute years. I think I was maybe nineteen the last time I had some. So been two years. Okay, got it. Hey, thank you. <laughs> I actually I've always been called 
younger than I look or younger than I actually am. Um, I've always been told I look younger than I am until I turned 40, in which point I had a customer come in and we were talking a bit. He's like, you're what, like 40? I'm like, fuck, <laughs> no, <laughs> no, I don't look my age. Where's my down home punch, says lady. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll have one for you just for you well, I hope you do have a good vacation and that would be a reminder you need the time to you know, reset every once in a while if you can and if you can't get off of work at least take a little bit of time at least each week if not each day take a little time to yourself just to do something you enjoy right yep absolutely um, you know we've got a few different fishing spots around here so that'll be nice you know, get to go out and do some fishing, which I recommend to anybody that likes, you know, the serenity and peacefulness of, you know, just the water and nature and just being outside. Um, you don't even have to catch fish. Just enjoy yourself. You know, and that's... Uh, you do is you just tie the, tie, tie the worm onto the end of the line, right? And you cast it out there. And then you're just feeding the fish because you don't have a hook so they can't bite it. So they can, you're just exactly. feeding the fish. Just tie on a big piece of steak, throw it out there, and just wait. And you'll catch a, you'll catch a Tim, because you said <laughs> steak. Catch a Tim. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Is that how we catch those? Yeah, the steak? Just, just yeah, just steak. That's all it needs. You need just <laughs> tons of steak, and I'm there. No. <laughs> right. No, we got uh. No, life is just too full of these. Not knockdowns. They keep pushing down. Keep pushing down. It feels like just things keep collapsing in everybody, and I yeah. see it all over the place. And that's you know, it's hard to break down. So just focus on the things you can. And if you can't think of anything else, get out and go for a walk. Right. It might clear your head. And if nothing else, and while you're on that walk, don't keep your head down. Just look at your feet. Look around. You know, mm -hmm. let yourself be distracted by whatever is going on around you. It could be, you know, sometimes those beautiful disasters where you're just watching something you can't believe is happening. This is horrible, but something, you yeah. know. And you know, I'm, an I'm a huge offender of that, looking down instead of looking up and around and seeing what's actually around you. Um, I've always, you know, I was always put down as a kid. So me making eye contact with other people was never a thing. I was always looking down at my feet and walking in a straight line, looking up under my eyelids and just making sure I knew where I was going. But, you know, it, it comes down to, for me in my personal life, it comes down to a self-esteem issue. You know what I mean? Yep. But it definitely helps. I've started doing that over the past 10 years, uh, raising my eyes and not looking down at my feet and actually taking pride in who I am and what I've done and just being myself. And it's very, very releasing when you do that. It's a, it's a different kind of feeling, but it's very freeing, you know, let go of all of that crap and just be you and hold your head up high. Don't hide yourself. You are who you are, and you're beautiful for it. So, And we haven't brought this up in a while, but like Sean Typhon has said on the show there, bring out a smile, even if it's fake at first. It, you'd be surprised how that can turn into a real smile. You know, Even if you're out in public and just smiling, walking by people, like I said, and saying, hey, how are you doing? And you might, might come off as fake, because it might be fake. But yeah. it, if you wind up having a conversation with that person, you might walk away with your smile being real. Absolutely. See, it's amazing how that, and it, smiles are contagious. They really are. And you'd be very surprised, uh, not maybe not you, but in general, the general public might be very surprised to understand and see how a smile could change just one person's life. You know, and not in like maybe a drastic way, but it could definitely put some positivity in their step for that day at least but it can make all the difference to somebody who's really down on their luck having a hard time and needing to know that somebody's thinking of them and that's 
that's something I keep repeating is, is people need to know that somebody's there. Somebody's thinking of them. Somebody cares, uh, rather than most of the, the public that just kind of turned a blind eye to those in need, such as, you know, homeless vets, homeless, anybody's, uh, people with special needs, um, people turn a blind eye all too often in these situations and that's not fair to them they're no. just as human as you and me you know what i mean i mean it's different for me because i've been personally in that situation uh i lived homeless in boston for two years i was roaming the streets that's all i did um you know and i don't i don't live that way anymore but i know what it's like to have people look down on you for not being you know at their level in life and it's not cool it's not cool at all it's not a good feeling so if you can guys just give somebody a smile i'm not saying you gotta go out there and give a homeless man 100 bucks don't give him 10 bucks 50 bucks don't 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 a smile can change somebody's life regardless if you want to do something nice for them, I don't know everybody's situations, but I know that some homeless people are alcoholics and drug users. And for me personally, I won't go out and give them money because I don't want them using that for their next bottle or their next fix. What I will do is I will go out and get them food and drink and I will bring them lunch or dinner and I will hand that off to them. And most often, they're just as grateful for that as they would be cash. But it takes the temptation out of their hands to grab what they don't need. Exactly. Yep. Exactly. I want to do something to better somebody's life, not make it worse. Yep. And just even if you didn't have the money on you, which honestly, I don't carry cash like I used to anyway. Hardly ever carry cash. But, you know, at least, you know, say, hey, how you doing? And, you know, sometimes they'll tell you something. You might find out their life story by the time you walk away. But it's they haven't been able to tell some people that probably for a long time because no one bothers asking. Exactly. Nobody asks questions. Again. Sometimes they just throw money and that's the end of it. And, so, you know, sometimes throwing that money is a temporary fix, whereas letting having someone actually care enough to hear your story. Right, is right. is a much more lasting fix. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You're absolutely right. And I want to just say a quick uh, thank you and shout out to Nightbot because uh, that's a definite thing that needs to, to happen. Um, guys, send out well wishes to anybody that needs it. There's a lot of people that are going through some really rough times. I know because I'm personally one of them. Um, if you don't know my story, what I'm going through right now, my uncle, my my mom's youngest brother, is in the hospital in ICU on a ventilator and intubated. Uh, he is currently in a, a comatose state. He cannot come out of that comatose state or his anxiety will spike because of all the tubes and he will freak out, which he cannot do. We cannot allow that to happen. Um, there's been no progress. He's been diagnosed with sepsis. He went into septic shock two Wednesdays ago. Um, and he's made no progress at all. So we're not sure what's going to happen from this point on, but much like myself, there are many others that are in this community and this family that need our well wishes, that need our help and show them that we care and that we're there for them. So thank you to Nightbot. And I don't want to give you a false hope because you know, sepsis is always a real thing. But the sepsis isn't what took my son. He, he was in a coma for three months before he came out of mm -hmm. uh, the sepsis. And the sepsis wasn't what had him. His low blood sugar before causes brain damage. And eventually he succumbed over time to pneumonia off of common cold because he his brain didn't allow him to swallow properly all the time with a cold combined with it. But the sepsis itself, he survived. So it is possible, even over a long term, to survive the sepsis sepsis in itself yes but i also know that the survival rate of one that goes into septic shock is not that great no it's not they told us he was That's gonna be bad. gone he was supposed to be gone um on his on his six-month birthday literally on the day 
he was supposed to be gone. And I had that feeling when I held him for the last time, supposed to take him off the machines, something didn't feel right. I changed my mind, and the nurse thanked me for changing my mind because he said even his body color pinked up when he was being held. It was that comfort, that closeness, that reaching out. It's kind of an almost a, a physical no reminder that there. exactly, and that makes the difference not just in the child's life, not just in your child's life, but in human life. It's what we are meant to be: is social social interactions are a part of us. And quite often we forget that, and especially with the way things are. Animal, yeah. We are a very social and communal animal. It's in our nature. It's just who we are. One hundred percent. And Nate Chapman, you're very welcome, man. I I don't hide shit. You know, I'm very open about my life and what goes on here. So, um, you know, there's nothing to hide here. And you're you're welcome, man. I, I'd like to share my story because maybe it'll help put into perspective some life things that are going on with you know some of you guys out there in, in chat. So uh, I feel like by sharing it, it does more help than than damage to myself. So, and I know that each of us on the panel have been through that very dark space at one point mm-hmm. in our lives. We I know how important it is to have people there for us. Even if we don't feel like it. And I know we've all felt that too. That point where we didn't want people around. But we really needed them. But we didn't want them around. Because it was easier to deny the, that we didn't need to be here. That we had no purpose. If we didn't have anybody remind us of it. And that's one of the blackest holes you can fall into. Yep. That is one of the deepest, darkest holes that I have ever found myself in. Was when I felt exactly that like i was in a room with the light turned off and nobody else was there like nobody was with me nobody was around i didn't have anybody to call on um i've been there we've all been there i I think at least once at one point in our life we've all kind of experienced this but you know it, it is one of the darkest places i could ever imagine going back to and the mental capacity that someone needs to be able to pull themselves out of that without help is it ooh ooh it's huge you need somebody to reach out and and grab your hand and help you up the wall of that hole you know it's not going to all happen at once but it's what we need and we all need help and it's never a bad thing to ask for that help no, and it, it you typically the first time someone reaches out to you if you're deep in that hole, that dark hole, you, the first time someone reaches out, you might kind of push that hand away, ignore it, but it still rings in the back of your head and starts this little seed that grows a little bit. Hey, I'm not quite alone. I can't quite give up. I don't have that capacity to give up now. Mm-hmm. And you're amazed that even if someone stays in that dark place for a while after, that seed's there keeping them going. That's stopping them from going too far. And right. causing it to become an end. Mm-hmm. It's amazing how much, uh, you know, that one thing you might not even feel like you helped, but doesn't mean you didn't. No, absolutely. I love helping. Helping makes me feel good. Yeah, so In does that so down home punch. That's a, very, that's a very selfish statement to make, but I do. I, I, it makes me happy to help others. You know what I mean? Like it, it's self gratifying, but it's not in the same sense. If that, you know, I completely understand. I don't know if I know I would not be in as good a mental state as I am if it weren't for the opportunity to try and help and talk to others and see what I can do. I mean, I know I, everything I say, isn't always going to help. It isn't. That's just the fact of life. Everybody's different. But for any person that it does help, it just makes me feel better that I was able to do so. It gives my life purpose. And also so. don't forget that actions speak louder than words too. You know, so just reaching out and being like, hey, I know you're going through a rough time, but I'm here for you. Being the one to initiate that is tenfold better than 
them reaching out to you and being like, hey, I'm in a bad place. I need help. You reaching out to them first shows them that you really are there. You know what I mean? Uh, it's not bad to ask for help, but it's also as a friend and as someone we call family, I feel like there's no obligation there, but I feel like it's our duty to reach out to our friends when they're in need, when they're going through a rough time, and just check in on them. Check in with them. Say, hey, I was thinking about you today. I hope you're having... Tim, you you and me, we do yep. that a lot. You know, we just check in with each other. I check in with other friends just to make sure that everything is going well with them and that they're not in a dark place, that they don't need a helping hand to reach out for them. If they do, I'm there. I'm Let, right let's there. be honest. The people that sometimes are in those dark places, if they're the ones reaching out, there's a good chance they're reaching out to the wrong people. Uh, right. Think about it. If you're in that dark place and say you're around a um, an addiction culture site situation, the person you're going to ask for help is someone else that's either there or is making money off you. And they're just yep. going to be there enough to continue that cycle. They're, mm -hmm. And they're, unless they're in the space where they want to get better or feel better, they're not going to really only be able to help you only to that low level of just existence, maybe, and right. not beyond. You Not to pull you out of that hole, but to keep you level in that hole. If you yeah. really want help when you're in that spot, it's hard to think, hey, I should reach out to someone who's really got it together and doing okay. No, that's not your first thought. That's never no. your first thought. So no. for that to happen is very rare. Your the most successful situation is the person reaching out that's already in a halfway decent space that can help someone else. Mm -hmm. I know typically my first thought is I don't want to burden somebody else with my problems. Yep. You know, yeah, we've had that discussion. You and I have had yeah, that discussion. <laughs> me and you and me and several others because there have been times over the past few months um, that I don't hide it well. I'm pretty vocal. Like I said, you know, earlier, I'm pretty vocal about what I'm going through. And when you've got so much shit piling up on your plate and that's all you talk about, it, it can become overwhelming for some people, you know? And, um, so something that, I've heard before, but I was talking to a friend, a uh, mutual friend of all three of ours, uh, and probably some in chat, but um, I was talking with a mutual friend of ours, and he was repeating something that was said in a podcast about the power of positive thinking and not dwelling on all the negatives. You've got to be able to look at the positives and the silver lining and uh, you know, find that sunshine, that little little bit of light in that darkness you know and go towards it make that your goal you know yep. the end result you want to be in that light you don't want to be in this dark and you're right tim it could take you forever to get there you know yep. it could seem like it takes years to get there it could um, literally take years to get there it could it could but as long as you're making progress you're inching ever closer towards that light you might not and, notice the progress. Others yeah. around you will. Mm, mm. You may not notice the progress. Perfect example. Me and guitar playing. I played several songs. That was it. You know, I, I knew how to play a couple of songs, and that was it. I never got any lessons, anything like that. Uh, I was self-taught, but I played like shit. I played like garbage. Uh, I recently, over the past few months, have gone through some guitar lessons, and I did not see any progress in my or improvement in my playing ability. But yet, other people around me did notice, and that's going to happen the same way. If people around you in your life are going to notice the changes that you've made and the steps that that you're taking, to get yourself into a better place. It can be yeah. just that, too. Just the fact that you're willing to try. That's a step. That's the first step that everybody notices first. You're trying. And yep. that's the step that's the hardest, too. It takes a lot of effort to make that first effort to try. Whether it's started by 
Is Lethal Frozen or am I? Uh, am I? Yeah, you were for a second. Okay. All right, you're good. Okay. <laughs> but, uh, but you take that first step and decide to get better. And it can be because of an outside factor. Say that seed that someone mentioned it to you a while back. But try to, please, if you are in that dark space, you do come out of that. Be sure to try and re- even if it's been years. Mm-hmm. Reach out and thank that person if you if it's possible for starting that seed because quite often because it's been so long you feel well I don't want to mention that that's what did it because that was so long ago it was years ago mm-hmm. it still matters it will still make them feel good that you, they they Absolutely. they initiated it they brought that out of you slowly it took a while for it to kick in and, but they started that and, and it's important that, that recognition, they know too. that recognition and acknowledgement of their they're initiating it, they're being there for you and giving a shit, will, by acknowledging that and saying, hey, you were there for me when I really needed you. Thank you. You know, it helped me so much. Will encourage them to continue to be there for you. You know, and you'll always have that that person by your side. And like Nate was just saying numerous times, people tried to talk to him and decided to take them up on the offer you know that's what the discord's about that's why i started that discord i mean it was kind of a mutual thing between john and i but i wound up starting it because i figured we need it sooner rather than later let's just do it so i made that because a place for people to not only to help try and help each other but it's a place where you can get like like i keep on referring to it as crowd surfing because i can't think of a better like a you know situation to explain it in reference to you jump into a crowd of one person, you're liable to crush that person, right? It's really hard to hold you up. But if you jump into a full crowd of people that are willing to help hold you up, you're more likely to like float. Like it's easy. Everybody's got a little part and that's what the discord is. It's a bunch of people helping each other. And the bigger it grows, the more successful it will be in a less burden that you feel you're putting on people because you're not. This is where it's really difficult in relationships. If you rely on that person being your rock, it's good to a point, but there can be that point where maybe a little too much burden will break that rock and then it's done and it creates rifts in relationships. You know, it's good to a point, but there's also a point that a little bit of outside help can be a good thing when it comes to a mental state. Absolutely. And that's a tough thing to do too, because even... In that same vein, I know I like to be the one that, you know, Lady Liberty comes to. But if she comes to me with everything, it is a lot of weight on me. And if I'm dealing with a lot of weight, it'd be that extra weight to deal with. And sometimes if you're dealing, especially with like financial stress, is usually the number one thing. Some type of financial stress or living situation stress. Like maybe, yeah, you know, maybe you have to move. And you don't want to. you got to move away from family. Or one of you has to choose whether or not for a job. It yeah. usually is where it comes from. But you add that to it. How are you there for each other when one of you wants something and one of you wants something else? It can't be your rock if they're literally at opposite poles of this whole decision. Mm-hmm. You know, then it's like you got to decide what's more important. And you got to kind of talk. Excuse me. Talk it through with someone that's neutral on the subject, not someone that you try. You don't try to sway them. Just talk to them and say, "Would it be so bad if?" That's usually what it is. To try and think from the other side of things. Yeah. And also, I I just want to make mention that if you are going through these dark times, it is going to take work on your part. We cannot rely solely on the others that are there to help us out if we do that rocks can crack rocks can break and that rock will no longer be there for us to lean on so it's very important for us to also put in just as much effort if not more than because it's our life that we're trying to fix maybe initially you might not be strong enough to that's when you yeah, have it, it, to rely absolutely. a little more on the, the other person. But yeah. as you pull yourself out, don't keep leaning on them. Try to stand right. up on your own. You know, Think of it as trying to walk again. If you've lost the ability to walk because of an accident, 
you don't keep leaning on those things. Eventually, you want your the goal is to walk on your own, and the only thing you do is keep on putting more weight on your own legs, keep pushing right. yourself forward, mm-hmm. and that goal is always going to be in mind. And if anybody does have problems walking, I apologize. That reference was not meant as an actual reference, but I mean, it could be a possibility. Yeah. But yeah, um, but I wanted to make that in closing comment. Yep, uh, I got to peace out because I got. Yeah, we've been on for a while downstairs. anyway, so. I got my cousin downstairs that is going to be leaving tomorrow to go on vacation. So uh, I'm going to go spend some time with him and his wife and the kids. And uh, big love, guys. Thank you guys so big much for love. having me on. Let me say my big piece. love. You guys. Big love, bro. Big love. I'll talk to you all later. Talk later. Peace. Peace, guys. Stay up. Love you, bro. Love you too, buddy. Nando, anything to add to that? Anything you've went through that might be some sound advice that maybe helped you at some point? Well, when it comes to the whole walking thing, I mean, look at that. I've been walking pretty much every day for the past three days. I didn't do any walking today because I didn't go to bed till almost sun up last night because I just couldn't sleep no matter how much shed time I had in my system. But yeah, I went from walking 2.6 miles and then I guess the last walk I did was Tuesday, not yesterday, but it says here that my walk was 2.56 miles. And that's a lot of walking, I mean. It's good that you're getting up and walking again. It does help. Is helping clear your head a little bit when you do on these walks? And look at that. That's the whole path I've been taking. Look, he walked the whole state of Wisconsin. No, <laughs> <laughs> no more like the whole town that I live in, pretty much. Minus the boondocks where... You and Nate, I'm very happy, very happy you found someone that made you feel like... Didn't feel it make you feel like a burden. Because that is the other thing. If you're going to help someone, don't make them feel like, oh, yeah, I'm helping you, but, you know, you know you're know, you a lot of work. No, that's the that's worse than help not helping. Make sure you mean it. Like, really mean it. Like, give of yourself. Don't expect them to cater to you or worship you for it because that shouldn't matter. If that's your goal, you're, I, it's one of those things where it's almost – it's a tough call, but it's almost better off you're not helping if that's actually your goal is to get the complete recognition and just sit there and lord it over them because that's not the purpose. Um, if it's, it has to be mentioned later that you were the reason that helped, you know, that can make you feel good, but at the same time, you know, that shouldn't be your life's goal. Your life's goal should just be to help each other just because yeah, that's what's good in life. And I'm telling you right now that if you're here right now and you've been in chat tonight, you have been helping. You are helping right now. Just being here is helping. So you don't. If you need that recognition, you're getting it right now because that's actually a fact. Everyone, it's uh, you and to Lando and to Lethal as well for being on tonight. Being here, being a part of the community, reaching out to each other, talking about things, discussing things, generally promoting positivity. That's helping. That's helping not just me, not just you. It's helping. Anyone who watches and anyone who has contact with those people that might be a little bit lighter hearted because of it, it spreads. We don't even know the end of it. But as long as we continue to put forth that effort, we continue to help heal the world in some way, shape, or form. I think yeah, like, that that's like, like yeah, the like greatest goal. And, like, pretty much me and you help people too with our podcast. Like, who knows, maybe somebody wanted to watch fucking whatever movie we've reviewed and we're just curious on our input and they go ahead and listen to the podcast no matter what episode it would be and be like, well, maybe I should watch this movie to see if I agree with them. And we do give some insight of the movie. It's kind of synopsis, but I try to keep it low enough to the point where it's still a good watch, not ruining the movie for you. Sometimes I purposely go a little out of order as well for that reason. I know Lando looks at me like, why are you doing it that way? That's not the way it is because if we actually give it 100%, 
then we kind of do also give away the entire movie, make it less watchable. When it's a good movie, especially, you'll see, you'll catch me doing that more often. But when the bad movies, I'm sorry, but there are some movies that we've both had them. I do. I'm the reigning champion on it. But we've had some movies that I strongly <laughs> recommend, unless you are really into the idea. Uh, no goes. <laughs> so, Killjoy. No. <laughs> Yeah, don't watch that movie unless you want to be Unless you want to watch us. all nine of them in a row, and you, uh, please contact us if you start to feel a little down and depressed and in that dark place, because if you watch all nine in a row, you very likely might. So, <laughs> Yeah. Maybe they get better. Yeah, right. It, yeah. it can't get I've worse, seen, can it? <laughs> I've seen some of the trailers for some of them, and I don't believe there was nine. I think there was more like six, maybe. I don't know. I can't remember how many fucking sequels there are. To the There's first too one. many. Too many. Yeah. The fact they made a sequel was a mistake. Um, yeah. But, yeah, just keep moving forward. Keep doing what you can. Find your own niche in life. Do your th- whatever makes you feel good. If it's gaming, go for it. If you feel like gaming, you start to feel a little bit like, like braver. Maybe Twitch is your thing. You never know. You know, get yourself, and don't ever be afraid of an older system either, because sometimes those older systems have a lot of things going on with them. Like I still want to switch for starters. Uh, mm-hmm. The Wii U actually, from some of the games and stuff. I mean, sometimes you know you want that retro feel. Sometimes you want to go back to a simpler time, maybe pre twenty twenty. Yeah, but <laughs> yeah, you then know? I have uh, two things that I downloaded onto my Switch that you can. You still need a one of those online cards that you can get so you can play certain games online with other people. But there's these two where you can play original Nintendo games and Super Nintendo games. And just the other day when I downloaded those two things, I played Super the original Super Mario Brothers for like We have the two original hours. Super Mario Brothers. Yeah, and I like yeah, the original original on the I was just on the original NES though, with the little pad game pad, but Nate, yeah, that is hey, I, that's Nate made an awesome comment. I just want to grab it before. I believe never tear someone down, always raise them up. The world beats us all of us down. Some kindness could raise someone out of a bad mood. That is one hundred percent true, and 90, 90 plus percent of why I do this show, trying to bring people back up. There's enough knocking us down. There's no point. We occasionally get, we haven't had any bullies in a little while, but they happen. And some people just watch the world, like to watch the world burn. Don't give in to them. Ignore them. Because they're going to be there, especially when it comes to the internet. You can't get rid of them completely unless they leave on their own accord. Because all they have to do is make another account. And I can't stop them from coming in. So don't give them the time of day. Don't let them tear you down. Remember there's people here that are here for a positive reason to bring you up and focus on them. Because they're the ones that matter. Yeah, back to the old Nintendo. Yep. They actually do have wireless controllers that look like the original Nintendo system. They even have ones that look like Super Nintendo controllers, too. Yep. I saw they have Atari Switch. controller ones, too. I don't know if they're available for the Switch, but there's available for some systems. I didn't see it for the Switch, but they did have the... They also have the controller for the GameCube as well. So no, so that's saying something. So if you yeah. want that true retro feeling, you can get it. That's mm-hmm. amazing. That see, yeah, that can have, be a lot of fun. Yeah, the same people that made this controller here, they also have controllers with decorations on them. They have one where it's shaped just like this and everything, but it's like a lighter color than this baby blue that my room is in but it has like soup like it has mario right here it's got a bunch of blocks on the other side that it just looks like the actual fucking video game in a controller and i would recommend playing some of the retro games at some point because games have gotten now they try to make them more and more real like you're really there sometimes we need to game and know we're gaming you know, that way yeah, there, right. instead of it feeling like real life, like we almost feel like the agitation and the angst from the playing the game, we get more of that 
Yeah, this is actually a game. If it doesn't go well, it doesn't go well. It's a game. I can tell it's a game. It feels like a game. It is a game. Sometimes some of those old 8-bit games and stuff are good for that. They give you that feel that, yeah, it's a game. It's hard, but it's a game. I just keep challenging myself with. Sometimes you need that reminder in your head. Yeah, like playing those old games that I grew up playing, it made me feel like a kid again. Yeah. Whatever you played as a teenager... Or games that you maybe didn't even play as a teenager because maybe you didn't have access to them. You know, not everyone can afford a gaming system when they're a teenager, you know, depending on their situation. Or maybe their house wasn't, you know, I know some parents that don't didn't like people their children gaming. It's still, you might even be one of those people. Like I said, to each their own, there's no, no judgment on that. But for some reason, if you want that feel... You can do that still. Like you were saying, you got ways you can actually play exactly the same way you did back then on the new console. You don't have to go out and buy an expensive console that's retroactive, an old console like our original NES that we just happen to have. You don't have to go and try and find one of them in decent enough condition to play, in mint condition. You could just get that system and you could still play and get the feel. The only thing you can't do is Duck Hunt doesn't work. Unless you have a retro TV, which we do have, and I got to bring it in the house just so we can play Duck Hunt. Yes, I'm going to go out and grab in the storefront. There's a couple 27 inch tube TVs. I'm going to go get them so we can play Duck Hunt because you can't play Duck Hunt without tube TV. It doesn't work on the new flat screens. Interesting fact if anyone's getting into it and really feels like they want to play Duck Hunt, remember you're going to have to buy the TV, not just the old system. So, yeah, I'm going super retro. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because... That's the I was eventual hoping plan. Dun- I was hoping Duck Hunt was on the list of Nintendo games, but nope. That's because you... Uh, the Like the like the Wii uses the sensor. Well, the original Duck sense- Hunt use, uses the actual tubes inside as the sensor. And actually, you I shoot a this, TV, and it actually goes to the TV instead of to the sensor piece. Yeah, I think this has a sensor in it somewhere. Yeah, but it connects to the control the the box. It doesn't connect to your TV. Whereas Duck Hunt was directly to the TV, and like the, the laser well, you shot probably... out went through the tube and, and actually sensed it, like the heat or whatever signature it gave off. The radiate radiate act radiate. Uh, irradiated signature that it, it gave to the tube responded to the location on the screen which is something you can't mimic unfortunately so unless you had like we could do it they could set and i'm not sure if they did we could do it with a different controller and have it so you could yeah, use like, it but like the joysticks here they can mimic the yeah, it could mimic it but then you're still not like aiming aiming you're kind of Thumb aiming. Yeah. But the, the what I liked about Duck Hunt is you actually aimed the gun at the screen. You aimed at your target. Something that they don't really have anymore that works. They had a bunch of games there that they came out with afterwards while they still had tube TVs that used to do it, but then they don't work anymore on the new flat screens. And then the original Joy-Con, they ha- definitely have sensors. I mean, the, yep. the reddish one, it has a sensor on the bottom of it. You can clearly see it. It's all black. I challenge you to figure this out, though. You know how the the original Wii works, right? With a little thing? Never had it. Well, in the other house, I used to... I was banned from playing Wii Bowling because from the bathroom, which is behind a TV, down the hall to the right, I used to be able to get strike after strike after strike from the bathroom while they were playing Wii U in the living room. How did that work? Explain it. Because I thought the sensor had to be in front of it. Somehow I did it, and I was banned from playing Wii. We couldn't play Wii Bowling anymore. Because I figured out the secret was not to be in front of the TV, and I could do it perfectly. (laughs) So, just just a little tidbit. Yeah, literally, that's how I got, yeah. (laughs) Literally, that's how I won that game and got banned. Yes. So, yeah, N64, zero. Uh, there you go. Cap, not Yeah, Saturday morning. Oh, that's it. I started watching the new He-Man series, and then I started watching how, if on, uh, I believe it's on Netflix, but they had the 
the origin how he-man originated it didn't start as a cartoon it started as a random action action figure muscle bound action figure but the evolving of what, how it came about and watching like some of the new um cybertron stuff for the transformers but it's bringing me back to like nate's talking about back to that time saturday morning cartoons I'm like almost tempted to start waking up on Saturday mornings and watch them because I think that some of the free channels through my uh, TV, they had the free channels that come through the TV itself. I think they have a Saturday morning cartoon channel. And I'm almost tempted to start watching it to get that kid feel back. Only thing is, I can't, I'd have to find a keto friendly bowl of cereal because <laughs> I need to have that bowl of cereal when you're watching TV. I don't know. I kind of want to feel that like, feel like a kid again in a little way. So I think that sometimes, you know, you bring need to bring yourself back to the basics of what it used to be when you were having those good times. I would like to get, I want to find Metroid again because I used to be Metroid on the original NES. I remember getting so mad at it because I used to have one of those cartridges that you'd have. You had one of those cartridges you had to clean with the Q-tip and the alcohol, blow it out, clean it. But, and it was constant. Every few days I'd have to do that. And it's just like... Mm. If anyone's ever had an original yeah, NES, you know that. what it's like to want to break the machine on a constant basis. I have almost. And that was part. The door. Yep. That you have to flip open like down. this almost. I almost damn near broke the damn thing. Like eight years old. Because I couldn't get some game to work. Marine Boy from put, Labworks, yes. I put it in. Castlevania. Push it down. I push it up, push it up. That was like going like this, and just that's well. Sometimes it was just a matter of getting it to pop down to just dam. right. Those, those connections, because you remember, it, it worked kind of like. I mean, honestly, that's where USB ports came from. The same idea. They have the different connectors in there. It's just they're a lot better connectors than we had back in the day. Those connectors wouldn't always just line up quite right. They'd get a little, they got tarnished a little bit. And of course, we're using Q-tips and alcohol to clean them. No one ever thought about the fact that maybe we should use some kind of like, like now, nowadays they even had it back then. But what about contact grease? Like electrical co diode contact grease. A little bit of that on there probably would have saved us from all that headache. No one ever thought about it back then, but I mean, I afraid to try it now because I don't want to ruin it because I can't replace the system because it's not available anymore. So, but that sometimes there's a way you had to pop it down just right. Maybe you'd have to do it 40, 50 times. You finally got it. Then it'd be working. You're like, yay. And then you play for 40 minutes and it'd freeze and like, eh. <laughs> I remember those days. Another thing that's pretty cool and I've seen them at like Walmart and stuff. They took a lot of game systems that we grew up on and redid them in a way. Yep. Like, yeah, made them have, so they have an actual memory card in them that has the game, so you don't have to deal with the downloading. Yeah, yeah like I have the a reamp version of the Sega Genesis handheld, and it came with games already installed into the system. All I had to do was charge the damn thing before I could use it. And that was Sonic it. the Hedgehog, yes. I actually yeah, bought the uh, that's retro. One of the games I bought, that's on there too. I think it's for the 360, it's not the Xbox seconds. One. But I bought um, Panzer Dragon. They redid it. It used to be a Sega Dreamcast game, and I they redid it for the Xbox. Uh, and I actually got the new one that you could play on the Xbox. Now I remember that game being so difficult back in the day. I pat I beat the damn thing in like less than an hour but i was so happy it's still retro and i remembered it all i could remember how to play the controls were different obviously but i remembered it but the thing was it would have still taken me still take me months to unlock all the different types of breath all the different types of flight and you know it'd take forever and that was the goal and i was going to do that and then i just never did but that Bring yourself back to those old points. Remember them, Crash Bandicoot. Man, Labworks, you got, you're rolling tonight. Yeah, all those retro games. Sometimes it's awesome that you can go back and play them. And like Lando said, if you can buy the original controllers so you get that true old school feel, it might just bring back a little of your childhood, the best times, you know, of them. The, the times when we always wanted, when we remembered wanting to grow up, thinking, oh, life will be better when I'm an adult. Yeah, we were nope. all full of shit. <laughs> yeah, we were all full of shit. We were foolish children. 
And we tell our kids the same thing, and they look at us like, yeah, right, I want to be an adult. In fact, it wasn't that long ago, my daughter started working and stuff and for her tuition this year, and she looks at me and she goes, I miss being a kid. <laughs> it's like, duh, I told you when you were a kid, but you wouldn't listen. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Crash, is, you know, there's just so many. The emulators are nice. And the, be the best emulators are when you can get some kind of retro feel controller. So it feels the same. Because it is a little different trying to play like like Panzer Dragon. I played on the new Xbox controllers and it doesn't feel the same as it did on the old school ones. Uh, on the Sega Dreamcast controller. So, you know, this, sometimes it doesn't give you 100% of the feel, but it'll still bring you back. Remember the good old days. Because sometimes that's what you need is those good memories. Like, think about them and remember what memories you can, the best memories you have. Try to remember every detail. And maybe you'll even remember more details the more you try to remember. If it was a wedding, birth of a child. If it's a wedding, remember the silverware. Remember the utensils. Remember the details of everything, the dances. Maybe you can try, even try to remember the dance order. The more memory of you that you have, the greater the experience of remembering that memory the better it will pull you out of a dark time just like uh oh I, this look on his face is scaring me <laughs> yeah there's hardware now that has been made yeah they're doing a lot of stuff uh, they are bringing back a lot of the retro stuff and as far as like Hollywood, if you watch, they, they keep bringing back the old and rebooting the re same old shows over and over and over again. It's like, well, they ran out of ideas, so they're doing it. Why can't we with our gaming? Remember some of those 8-bit games that used to drive us nuts and try to bring them back and bring it into your life again. Remember those Saturday morning cartoons? You know, you watch, why don't go watch Dexter's Laboratory or no thundercats or you know any of these old cobra oh yeah remember cobra yeah gi joe gi joe and cobra uh it's nah, a little I before you transformers um actually they went that went through several generations because it went through different variations because they went transformers then went beast wars and it just kept going so yeah yeah they like I have Turtles did the same thing. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Yep, I got I have a DVD that has a special episodes of that show. I have it somewhere around here. <laughs> I have that. I have uh I've been watching well, not lately, but I have the original Rugrats on Hulu. Watch that off and on lately. And I also I strongly suggest days, collecting yeah, something. Yeah, the last couple of days I've been watching Futurama. I watched yeah. that when I was a teenager. I was going to watch that last uh, today, actually, but we wound up watching something else. But I strongly recommend not necessarily getting into a deep collection, but collect something from your childhood. If you can find a collectible piece, even if it costs a little bit extra because it's going to be, you know, if it's antique or something. Something from your childhood that really brings forth some memories of your childhood, of one of your favorite toys or something. It doesn't have to be your favorite, your absolute favorite, but one of them. Say you were into Transformers, you know, you had the original Megatron or Optimus Prime. They still are available. And there's also replicas, but get something like that that you can put someplace where you can see it. So if you're having a kind of a bad day, you look at that and go, hey, I remember that. And just kind of give, let yourself fall into that nostalgic moment. Galaga. Yep. Yeah. Like Galaga, um, Space not Invaders. Exactly, not exactly like else on it, but like this, for instance, I used to watch the original Power Rangers as a kid. Once yeah, I, I saw this and it was the Green Ranger, I had to have it. Yeah, but you see that on the shelf every once in a while. And once in a while, you'd be like, eh, Power Rangers, I haven't watched that in a while. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
It might even remind you of the day you bought it, even. It's going to be a pleasant memory of the day you found it. But just keeping these positive memories around you. Don't go to the point of hoarding necessarily, unless you have room for whatever it is. But get to the point where, you know, you keep what you really enjoy and kind of keep yourself in a positive way. And if you create things, yeah, old school woodworking tools, chisels, planes, that's awesome. Or do things like yeah, Jake Jake does too, you know, with his mod work, you know. Yeah, there's something else that I bought recently that reminds me of my younger years. Plus, it's quite obvious. Here, I'll show you. I don't oh, think boy. I've shown you yet. And uh, lab works like flavorings. Uh, maybe make some recipes and stuff up, you know, DIY that remind you of your youth or maybe of people that you cared about that used to make stuff. Talk about DIY flavorings. Oh, God. Ghost face. <laughs> What's up? It kind of reminds me. Yeah, and it kind of <laughs> reminds me. Also reminds me of uh, that one game that you like to play on Saturdays. Not Quip Lodge, obviously, but... Oh, the murder mystery one. Yeah, because if you yep. look at him, he's pretty much a stitched up doll. Yep. He's obviously not actually made out of the same material as plastic, but... But yeah, it's made to yeah. look like that. Yeah, see that? That works as a collection. So he understands. You know, don't let people talk you into the fact that you know, collecting is like a childish thing because that actually does. If you're not collecting like a real car or whatever, you know, sometimes that's not you can't afford the real car, but you can afford a model of like a car you used to have or model of a car you used to want to have. And that can be a reminder of the fact of what it was like back in the day when you really that was the thing you wanted. That was your goal in life. I mean, how many how many people remember the old Lamborghini posters with all the hot babes leaning on them? How how many of those do you remember seeing? You remember seeing those? Always had the Lamborghini Diablo or the Countach. Always one of those two. Yep. Yeah, I'd see them in movies, TV shows. I'm pretty sure either one of my brothers probably had it. Yeah, on that kitten poster with the case. just hang in there, the just hang in there kitten poster. Everybody remembers that, don't you? From book club, they always had that in every book. Sh every time they sold books at school, they always had that poster hanging for decades. The just hang in there thing. It's like we. Are, I remember thinking that. Oh, that's kind of cool. And I was thinking, wow, that thing's been around a long time. They still have that. It started feeling like it's a retro thing. Like a that that it's still you can still get those to this day. I mean, just hang in there. Those are like 30, 40 years old from the original picture. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I have a cat photo or cat poster. Lemonade ice pool for his kid fishing. And it's totally something I would get because it's got the angry cat on it and it says go away or something like that. Yeah, banana bread. You see, yeah. I'm thinking, you know, I don't know. Maybe I can talk the guys in to one of our. Uh, zippy into one of these days doing that a retro show where you we diy something from our past some of our childhood that reminds us of our childhood because i think that that memory that connection i think it could only happen through diy the chances of it happening through a commercial liquid are almost impossible i mean it could happen but it's very very well, it just have to be luck yeah it also matters on the who's making it and everything because think about it there's so many rice crispy treats liquids out there getting and the one that reminds you of the rice krispies you used to have and the your palate mm -hmm. being different yeah because yeah, when i was a kid my mom she actually worked as a cook at butcher and sometimes not all the time but sometimes she'd come home with somewhat fresh rice krispie treats from work and they were awesome and if i could find a liquid that tasted just like my mom's rice krispie treats 
Well, that works has got a good one. A true three-part really rocket good. pop because we have not really had a good three-part one. It's always like one or two shining parts, and that's all you get. That would be a difficult challenge right there for sure. And getting a motorcycle, you know, just be careful. Take your time. Make sure you drive easy. Don't overdo it in corners because dirt can take you down quick, especially if you're new. And use the front brake only if you have to. Try to use your rear brake as much as possible, or my advice, because quite often people, that's where people get in trouble. Using that front brake, once you lose control of the front end of the bike, you go down. And a lot of people instantly want to grab that. That's one of the best, worst reactions you can have, especially going down a hill and if you're in dirt, which is what happened to the bike I just repaired was because he was going down his driveway, had mail in one hand, hit his front brake, went down. That's how he damaged his bike. And it was damaged to the point where they actually scrapped the bike and he had to salvage title it when I fixed it. So, yeah. So just be careful. Take your time. But I would not. I would say that the bike is one of my zen places. If I can get out on a bike, it just kind of brings. You have to focus on the road to make sure you're not going to hit any. You know, you're focused. You focus on nature because it's around you, and it's something you have to watch out for anybody pulling out. So you're always alert, and it opens your mind. You think that closes your mind because you keep busy, but it opens your mind to experiencing everything, and that's like a zen to me. I love riding my motorcycle. new electric bike now that's interesting i would like to now get a hold of a trail bike get one of those well a trail yeah, bike i'm just not sure my body can handle it <laughs> yeah, my dad last time i saw him a few weeks ago he was talking about yet again talking about wanting to get a uh, a motorized bike because as some people know i tried getting a bike and it didn't work out because i have short legs so i had to return it and everything and my dad knows this and he's asked me if i have even looked into getting a bike that i can reach <laughs> but uh and i told him no that i haven't looked into it yet because bikes aren't cheap nope especially those are you talking wait a minute battery they, ones they even make you know, adult size big wheels, your feet will reach on that. You are not catching my fat ass on one of those. No. I would drive <laughs> it. I would ride of an adult size big wheel just for fun. Probably break my knee because it pop every they single They would have pedal to have down. a pretty wide seat then. They do. They have like a flat open seat, just like the original the original big wheel for kids. It's the same size. It's just bigger and the big wheels is bigger than my desk yeah but i have a really wide ass just saying so you just lean up and then lean back i don't know i i don't know how the seat works exactly in them but i'm sure they have something that'll fit you uh ducati 748 i actually wanted that 748 for the longest time i did yeah i wanted one for the longest time it was actually one of my dream bikes 748 was yellow and a 916, was it? 918? Can't remember for the uh, for the 900 version. It was in red. And somewhere in this house, I still have the collectible versions of those. So just saying, the die cast versions of those bikes because I wanted them. So yeah, real thing. But I the, couldn't get over the price tag of spending like you know, 20, 30 grand on them. That's a lot of money for a bike. When you can spend 10 grand, it could get to 1,000. So it's like, ah. it was a tough choice. But I love riding a bike. I think anyone who does, they should just enjoy themselves. That's what my, uh, the bike I just fixed was a, um, the uh, 1100 Honda, uh, the CB 1100, it was a cafe racer style that he got because it reminded him of his old um, CB 400 he used to have. It was the same style, and he wanted a bike that reminded him of it, but he got wanted the newer one, so he got that one, the 2013-2014 version. I think he got 2013, and that's the one I just had to refix because 
he's kind of a hippie in a way, and he went down the hill, hit his front brake, and yeah. It didn't do the bike any justice. And ironically, you know, when you get a bike that's rare, because that was a rare bike, it's expensive to get parts. They charge would charge a fortune for him to take it into the dealership and get it fixed. So they scrapped the bike because it was beyond a certain point of whatever it was worth. Eventually this year, I put everything back together for him, bought the parts direct from Honda and put it all back together. And he's been riding it all summer. So, you know, never give up on it. You know, you can always get something. The 918 and then, yeah, then they came out the 999. Hunting yeah, on a katana. Dad, I had I had the eleven hundred katana. Yeah, my dad used to have. Well, right before him and my mom got divorced, he did have a old Harley. And then when he was with a another woman, when I was in like my teen years and twenties and stuff, he had another motorcycle. I'm not sure what kind of motorcycle it was. I don't know motorbikes or anything like that. Nowadays, my dad has a trike, which I think he said that he might be selling one day. I had a moth just... land on my leg. It scared me. <laughs> it's like, what's touching my leg? Oh, oh you um, want to hear about getting scared shitless? I was outside, I think it was either last night or the night before, and I was doing some shed time like I do. I don't do it in the house, obviously, but I was outside and I happened to see something on my neighbor's roof and I was like what the fuck is that thing I was just staring at it I'm like 50 like 20 to 30 feet away from it and I'm looking at this thing like what the fuck all of a sudden it moved and flew away it scared the shit out of me even though it wasn't even flying near me it was flying away from me <laughs> I think it might have been an owl not sure. We just, Probably. I never At nighttime, really... most likely. Yeah, yeah I had an 1100 weird. Katana with a Stage 3 jet kit in it. I went and test drove a uh, Hibusa from the same place I got it uh, that from and had the work done. And I drove the Hibusa, came back, and was how you like it. I go, I need to put about, about three grand into this to make it as fast as my bike. <laughs> the Hibusa. <laughs> it's like, even though my bike's old, that Stage 3 jet kit was quick. And it really would have cost that much or more to put make it as fast. So I never wound up upgrading it. And then I wound up breaking the chain, a DID gold chain on the uh, on it when I geared it down one day. And it uh, snapped the clutch pin and it started leaking oil from that point out. And eventually just let it go somewhere. Let someone have it. Powerful motors. They use those motors for drag bikes for years, the 1100 Katana motors. For that reason. But anyhow, we should probably close it up for the night. It was a great night. I'll, thank you guys for hanging out and chat and having a good time. And we will try it and see hopefully some of you on Saturday. And we'll definitely have a little bit of fun. Hang out, relax, chill, and just have a good time. Let some of the worries of the world wear, wear off you. You know, come off your shoulders and have, like I said, just have a good time. That's all there is to it. Love you all. Reach out to someone you haven't heard from. If nothing else, you'll make their day a better day. Or maybe you might save a life. You don't know. Love you all. Bye.